Hi there, everyone. My name is Priyak Jithani. I'm a resident physician at Stanford. I'll be graduating soon and I'll be a hospitalist. And I figured I would share the things that I've learned over the last three years in residency. And this is going to be unhinged advice. And the reason why I think unhinged advice can be meaningful is because it tends to often hit on things that I think we all talk about in the back of our heads, but never formally say. So hopefully this is going to be different than the cookie cutter advice that everyone gives new residents and medical students. And, and I also hope that you learn something from this. This video is catered for medical students as well as residents and even residents who are already in training because sometimes the best thing that I got to hear in residency is to hear that another resident felt very similar to me because it made me feel heard. So with that being said, here's the disclosures. The goal is for me to share advice that's grounded in my experience. It may not necessarily reflect your experience, but it's just something that I've learned over the last three years. And if you agree with it, great. If you don't agree, I'd love to hear why exactly you may not agree with it. Uh, the goal is for the advice to be not cookie cutter. Like everyone's going to be like residency's hard. Make sure you take time to spend with your family. That's very cookie cutter advice. But the stuff that I'm hoping to share with you is going to be a little bit more chaotic and also kind of hit at some hidden truths about residency that I think uh, everyone should be appreciative of. Uh, and I think, again, this is particularly important because I'm almost three years into residency and I've lived through literally the lowest lows and some of the greatest highs. And I hope that I can share exactly what you can expect. And again, much of what I'm sharing is based on my experience. It may not exp extrapolate to yours. With that being said, let's just go ahead and get started with my first piece of advice, which is please stop doing research that you don't care about. I think everyone does research because the problem is our residency application system is so misguided that almost the number of publications that everyone has is almost like a badge of honor. Even if those publications, you know nothing about them, they're, they're in an area that you don't care about. And yet people do that every single time in medical school. And unfortunately, that might actually be the case in medical school because people have had to do a lot of random research, a lot of random publications just to make it seem like they're academically rigorous. But at least in residency where you're working 80 hours a week, you don't have time for stuff like that anymore. I would strongly encourage you to stop doing research that you don't care about. If anything, do research in things that you do care about and you know that you meaningfully want to contribute to and are genuinely curious about. But if you're doing research, and honestly, anything that you don't really care about that much anymore, one, it's going to contribute to you feeling burnt out because now you already have such a limited time outside of residency and you're doing something that you don't like with that limited time. It's a recipe for burnout. So spending it on something that you actually like doing is going to be meaningful. So another flip to this is, you know, if you're going to do research, try to do it on something that you care about. So for example, I'm doing a lot of research on diabetic foot infections. And specifically, I'm working with a lot of undergraduates who are applying to medical school. And that's a bit more meaningful to me because I can at least mentor them and kind of show them the process of creating scientific material to present. And not necessarily because I'm always just like hardcore or like doing data collection. And so that's one way I found to make research rewarding. And this is a poster that I made with some of those undergraduate students that made me feel very happy. Here's another uh, piece of unhinged advice. Um, I think the general rule in residency is to survive and to not be a jerk. And this is something that's very important because you'd be surprised. People want to go through residency being the best doctor they can. Some people want to go through residency and never make a mistake. Other people want to go through residency and are always comparing themselves to others and feeling incompetent. And I was doing the same thing. I thought I would be like the perfect doctor. I never wanted to make mistakes. I was like, man, I want my notes to all be perfect. But the more I ad adhered to these unrealistic expectations, the more burnt out I felt. And then more like three years in, what I realized is lower my expectations. Specifically, my expectations are usually to survive, make it through a very, very rough day, and more importantly, to not be a jerk. In medicine, we will see the worst in others. We will often also see the worst in ourselves. I can't tell you the number of times I felt stressed because I'm 12 hours into a shift. I have five admissions I haven't even looked at. I have another decompensating patient, and then I have X or Y number of people telling me I need to do all this other stuff. You are stressed beyond your limits. And oftentimes what I found during those times is to be like, hey, not everything has to be perfect. I just have to make sure everything is survivable and I have to make sure I'm not a jerk because believe it or not, the hospital is a very small space. And the last thing you want is to isolate or alienate yourself as that one guy who, who's an asshole, right? So I now have kind of basically said, days are gonna be hard. We kind of acknowledge it and just know that there will be days that you will say, why am I here? It's like 16 hours in and I'm still not done. I'm exhausted. But sometimes 
just acknowledging that can take you a long way and remind yourself that you've been through much worse. I've had residency days where I've worked 20 hours in a row. I've had residency days where I've basically not had any sleeps. I've had, re I've had residency days where I go to sleep thinking, is this really what I want to do? And those are some of the lowest low points I've ever had. But I have now started to use that as fuel to say like, hey, there will be tough days. But again, the goal is to survive and to not be a jerk. Everything else is optional. And if you want to then grow and slowly learn how to become a better doctor, so be it. But don't hold yourself to unrealistically high expectations. Residency is hard for anyone. And I think best thing you can do for yourself is to make sure you lower your standards a bit and be kind to yourself. Here is another piece of unhinged advice. Um, it's called humility and DBAA. What exactly is DBAA? Well, if any of you watch Breaking Bad, you will know that there is a scene where uh, Jane talks to Jesse and she says, DBAA, don't be an asshole. Um, the big thing here is to remember, don't be a jerk. But more importantly, the humility aspect is ask for help. Ask, 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 ask for help. If you don't know what's going on, ask someone. The, believe it or not, there's people in the hospital who are much smarter than you and will be that way, and they can be very helpful to you. Uh, there are many fewer times I've regretted asking for help than not asking for help. The best thing that happens if I ask for help is that someone says something that I thought I was already thinking, and so I don't feel bad about it. Or they say something that makes me say, oh, I definitely didn't consider that diagnosis. That's awesome. Uh, and then similarly, the don't be an asshole dude, don't, just don't do it. Like there's so many people in the hospital, like the moment you think you're better than someone, it just doesn't end well and end up doing well. And that applies to nurses, social workers, whoever it is you're working with, listen to them. They, they know a lot. They've been in the hospital a lot and it doesn't compare your three years in the hospital are not going to compare to the 30 years they've been working here. And I guess my last piece of unhinged advice is that your co-residents are your insurance. So insurance is a very interesting concept. It's basically deleveraged risk. We all pay into it. And then when something crazy happens to one of us, we are basically looked out for by that thing. The same thing in residency. Your co-residents are your insurance. So the kinder you are to your co-residents, the more you're likely to step in when someone is sick or maybe your co-resident is not feeling well and you ask them, hey, how's it going on? The more likely you are to ex to be able to get something like that when something crazy happened to you. So for example, let's say you're having a particularly rough week and maybe one of your co-residents is there for you and you were there for them before. That co-resident may actually agree to take on a few of your shifts if you want. They may actually support you. I have so many co-residents, I can call at like 4 a.m. and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a very challenging case. Can I, can I run it by you? And that can be really helpful because you're not in this alone. But guess what, if you don't put the same thing into that, that your co-residents will not do the same for you. If you're not approachable, if you're not kind, if you're not the one who can actually help someone, then they're not going to help you. So just remember that your co-residents are your insurance. Like be kind to them, invest in them because they're going to invest in you. And down the road, when you're all doctors, these are going to be people, people you call lifelong friends who can then help you when something goes awry in whatever organ system that you're worried about. So hopefully this was helpful for you all. Um, definitely just to recap, please, please, please don't do stuff you don't care about in residency. You just don't have the time. Uh, please make sure you just focus on surviving. Lower your expectations. Be kind to yourself. Don't be an asshole. And most importantly, invest in your colleagues because they will invest in you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.